playing with your snow banks and everything down here in the foreground, let's go ahead and put some of these rocks in the water. And these are very easy to do because they're just little lighter shapes that we're just going to brush in with our small background brush. Uh, don't go up here where the dam is. That needs to stay dark for right now. But I'm going to pick up a little bit of the raw sienna and white. You could add a touch of burnt sienna with it too. It's just kind of a light brown. And just take your brush and just do some little strokes in here. That's maybe almost too light. We've let it dry quite a while, so it's kind of, uh, mine at least, is kind of dry. So I'm going to put just a little bit of raw under with that. I don't want to make everything covered up as far as the dark values go. I want to leave some of that open. I'm going to have to put just a little bit more dark raw umber in there because I don't want my rocks to be too light. If yours comes off real light like that, just go ahead and put a little bit more dark over them with the raw umber. But they're, they're mostly, they're just like strokes of the, with the width of the brush stagger them so they're not all in a row or all you know right on both top sides of each other. Of the yeah you can go on both sides uh -huh. and coming down into the foreground we'll, we'll not not have big rocks in the foreground down in the foreground we're going to do something just a little bit different there so I won't come down there quite yet but to make these set right down in the dark water, since it's been a while since we blocked this in, mine is, like I said, getting pretty dry, uh, you need the bottom of the rocks with a more of the raw umber so they look darker right where they're setting down against the dark of the stream bed. Something like that's good. Just, you know, got, got some little chunky rock shapes in there and that's all we need. I'm going to go ahead and pull a little bit of water off the, the uh, dam up here and there's not much coming over, just a tiny bit and then we'll kind of zigzag some of that water on down through around the rocks and stuff, so forth. This is a little bit of blue-white and I'm taking my uh, small brush, detail flat brush, take a little blue-white and just draw a line across the top of the dam. So it looks like there's maybe just a little edge of water that you're seeing up there. Across the top of the dam. And then I'm taking the fan brush and a little bit of that blue-white just in the corner of the brush and pulling just a little bit of it over the dam. You're catching right into that blue-white and dragging it down kind of very gently. Don't push. Just a very light little pull. Come straight down. You've got a little bit of water, see, coming over Oh, the edge. isn't that cute? It is cute as it can be. <laughs> and then no, you don't do too much. <laughs> tap. Tap and a little bit of zigzaggy create a little bit of a, like a little foam pattern or something there. Very light touch, that's the secret, the light touch. And then I'm switching to my flat brush, the detail flat, and I'm going to very lightly do some little wiggly wigglies around the rocks with my little stream of water. This is white or kind of a blue white, whatever will show up. And, and the drier this base coat is, it, really the easier it is. And if, if, you're real, if your paint's really thick and really wet, you might want to wait until it dries some more to do this or it, it muds it up. But it's a light, light touch and kind of wiggle around the rocks. Okay. And so you're working it around the rocks. Somewhere down in here, I've created a little bit of a waterfall. You can find just a little place right there where you think the water might want to fall over if it's a good location for a fall. And I can come in with my fan brush again and pull some little 
bits of the water over an area there and, and again you created a little bit of a waterfall. Again, light touch, light touch, don't push. Tap a little bit at the bottom. Back with my fan. So Come on down. And then you get down into the foreground. And again, we've got more little zigzags. My blue white's not going to show up too much, so I'll have to get a little bit of white of white here. And you're coming out over some of this uh, stream bed over here that had a little bit of the raw sienna in it. And again, we're doing just little zigzaggy strokes with a light, light touch, so it the brush just kind of skims across the top of the water with that little bit of white or blue-white underneath it. I didn't do too much. I just kind of let it fade away down here, just kind of go off into the, into the foreground. A little white. I'll put some more blue there. I like the blue white the best when it'll stick. And kind of zigzag away. And there comes your foreground. I see another place on mine that would make a good little addition to my waterfall right up here. I'm going to come right over into this area and just do another little bit of a falls right here. Your uh, hey, your path of your water and your rocks and everything might be a little different from mine, so you may see a different place to put a waterfall. Any place that you feel like, you know, you got enough rocks and stuff here to kind of contain the water and then just let it drip over the edge, that's all it takes. And then tap to get that little foamy pattern of the water as it's falling. This one just went a little bit farther across. So we've got two waterfalls in this one. Be sure that the water lays flat. That's very important. Don't, don't get it going sideways or some way that it wouldn't naturally lay. Because it won't look right. And sometimes less is better than more, so don't, you know, don't get too much up here. 